Now, lots of people say that there's no evidence for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, so all I'm going to do here is provide one line of evidence. It's unfortunate, but I just don't have the time to mention something like the half dozen facts developed by resurrection expert Gary Habermas, for instance. Minimal facts that even skeptics, atheists, and liberal scholars agree on. These facts are as follows. One, that Jesus died by crucifixion. Two, that very soon afterwards, his followers had real experiences that they thought were actual appearances of the risen Jesus. Three, that their lives were transformed as a result, even to the point of being willing to die specifically for their faith in the resurrection message. Four, that these things were taught very early, soon after the crucifixion. Five, that James, Jesus' unbelieving brother, became a Christian due to his own experience that he thought was the resurrected Christ. And six, that the Christian persecutor Paul, formerly Saul of Tarsus, also became a believer after a similar experience. Man, I wish I had the time to mention those, but I just don't. No time, good sir. No time, no time at all. I just don't have time to bring up what former atheist and law-trained journalist Lee Strobel said when he said, I figured it would be easy to disprove the resurrection. Give me a weekend and I can shred Christianity's central claim. Well, it wasn't that easy. After investigating the historical evidence, Mr. Strobel believed in the resurrection of Jesus. Watch the movie, read the books. Bummer I couldn't mention that to you. Ain't got time for this quote either. My job is to infer what is most reasonable from the list of evidences, said cold case detective J. Warner Wallace. After digging into the evidence, I was convinced that what the Bible claims about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is the best explanation. The only weakness in the case, and there are always weaknesses, was my own bias against resurrections. Now, since I don't have time to mention such things, let me just get right to my point, okay? My one and only line of evidence has to do with the appearances of Jesus after his death. This is recorded in an early creed cited by the aforementioned Paul the Apostle, which we find in his letter to the Corinthian church. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received. Received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared also to me. Okay, there's a lot of people who saw Jesus after he was crucified and buried, and this is exactly why Paul was so confident to stand in front of Festus and King Agrippa and tell them the truth. It's in Acts 25 and 26. Here's a snippet. Paul Paul says, I stand here testifying, saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would come to pass, that the Christ must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. Now Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, your great learning is driving you out of your mind. Not sure if that was his actual accent, but Paul said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus. I am speaking true and rational words, for the king knows about these things. None of these things has escaped his notice, for this has not been done in a corner. In other words, all this was falsifiable. Everyone around town was talking about Jesus' resurrection. People had seen him. The tomb was empty. The stone was rolled away. The guards were perplexed. The religious leaders were mystified and tried to create a lie about what happened to the body. Paul, who was persecuting Christians earlier, was now one of them preaching the resurrection of Christ. None of this was hidden. It was all out in the open. So, my eclectic, evidence-eager evangelist, each ecstatically expecting an extraordinary ending, I leave thee with this from Clive Staples Lewis. This is the story. What are we to make of Christ? There is no question of what we can make of him. It is entirely a question of what he intends to make of us. You must accept or reject the story. But what you can't do is glibly claim or irresponsibly assert that there is no evidence for the resurrection of Jesus because that, my friends, has been debunked. Adios. This video was fully funded by a generous donation. To keep debunked videos free, please consider a tax-deductible donation or reach out to us to sponsor a video.